It's not like that, it's not as realistic as you know, some people make it seem like, but I think that's really about it. Like, they say on oh, three times, four times, yeah, yeah. Right. you know. Hey everybody, my name is Yao Seyusu. Uh, my name is Portia Seyusu. Oh. The good thing about marriage is sex because you can have it and not feel bad. Yes. Well, compared to like, man, in the past, if you have sex, you're like, oh mm -hmm. Lord, what I do? But, uh, but I think the idea of maybe it's going to be the most crazy to three times a day. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. It's not as realistic as you know, some of people make it seem like, but I think that's really about it. Like they say all oh, three times, four times. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. you know. Yeah, it's just this idea of I think maybe what we just see on TV is what kind of builds people's yeah. world views on these things. Because I remember watching TV and be like, yeah, you have to have sex this many times and you're married and then I'm like, okay, I guess that's I feel like in the honeymoon stages you do that, but sometimes you be like, I'm tired, we watch movies fall asleep and you know, uh, you know, that yeah. you know, yeah, the work schedules too, so it's just a mm -hmm. bit tiring. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's really nice. I enjoyed that part. Um, what is keeping the spark in your marriage? What's what is that? the spark in our marriage? I think, I think the, I think the communication, the, like being spontaneous, um, the joking, the, the, just being ourselves, man. You know, I think it's, to me, it's just being hey, Charlie, in your way. Or we make it a conscious effort that, hey, on this on this Tuesdays, let's do this. And I think we figure those stuff out. And then I think that, again, communication, transparency, and honesty. Once we get, oh, get over a certain hurdle, like, oh, let's talk about this thing. We did this. What do you think about it? Okay, cool. Did I know that? Okay, this is what she may like. In the area of, let's say, sex and these things, maybe we have a conversation. Hey. How was it? How was it? So I, I want to try this. I want to try this. She's a bad one, so oh, so wow. it's telling me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on a serious note, we talk about it. And I think that if this is what you like, then how then do we make it even better and concentrating on that very thing that makes you good? So I think those things help just make every part of the relationship from sex, communication, um, spirituality, even our fasting and praying is like, you know, we fast and we seek, we pray. And I noticed that it brings us closer. Sometimes we're able to talk about those things. When I was praying, that's what I saw. You know, we build spiritual gifts together. Like, and I think for a woman, that excites her. For me as well, so that my wife is also coming along with me on this journey. All those things, I think, when it comes together, it builds a certain spark and the tenacity to keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you say, um, Portia, um, make it more um, carnal? <laughs> 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 Um, no, I think it's just honestly for we're both to an extent spontaneous people. Uh, I think you more so. Yeah, me more so. Okay, <laughs> y'all yeah, more so than me. I'm more of a planner. He's more of a spontaneous person. But I think the spontaneity keeps it exciting. So even though we haven't been married for long, I think um, there have been several instances where we'll just do things that keep us excited about the relationship that we're in. For example. Um, um, There'll be a day that he'll come home from work and he'll say, get dressed, we're going somewhere. I'm like, hey, where are we going? What should I wear? To say, oh, don't worry, just you know, see how I'm dressed and, and copy it or something like that. And those things keep us, like, they keep us engaged, keep us excited, all of that. Um, so I think that's one. Spontaneous trips, whether it's a weekend trip or a day trip or you know, going to see something, going to a movie, whatever. Um, all of those things, I think, add and keep us excited about what we're in. Okay, so how was the meeting the parents experience? <laughs> um, I think in both cases, we happened to meet parents. I think, oh, so I met Yao's parents first um, when I went to visit my friend. And then we had started dating by that point. And I said, okay, well, if I'm in, my friend lived in the same city as them. So I said, okay, if I'm here, I have to go at least greet them. So thankfully I had my best friend with me, so that made it a little less awkward. Um, but his parents are very welcoming, they're very loving, so they just were, they were jovial and playful, so it made it very comfortable. Um, 
so yeah, I don't think it was. I think after that, I, his mom started even calling me, be, being friendly. Um, so it was very chill. It was very chill. I don't. I didn't have any. I didn't feel any pressure. Well, I felt pressure when I was going. Don't get me wrong. But coming out of it, I was like, okay, it, it was fine. It was fine. I think in your case, you met my mom before yeah. she knew we were. Yeah. Dating. So I actually met her. I was invited to LA uh, church. Uh, Church of Pentecost and LA, uh, the worship weekend or something like that. And Pastor Portia had invited me as the guest artist. But I knew Portia's older sister before I knew her. So Portia's older sister knew me from Virginia and stuff like that. So when I came, she brought me home and the mom was so sweet and beautiful. We, we spoke, we talked, we had a great time. By that time, I don't know if we were dating, right? So it was more of just like Portia's friend as well. And then later on, we started dating. Mom was cool. Huh? You know, her parents are very chill. My parents are just like <laughs> all over the place, very super friendly. Their, par their parents are, her parents are very nice and cool, but chill. So, yeah, so, but so they're very nice, very nice people. I mean, uh, dad just asked questions. Hey, how's the thing? I was church, and I think for him, his dad just loved the fact that he's just really into the things of God and those things. So. Yeah, it was, it was cool, very cool. Never, I guess nervous in the beginning because you just don't know what to expect. After that, it was cool, yeah, so it wasn't, wasn't bad at all. What was it like when you had to go there to say that you were gonna marry Portia? But, so do you mean like the knocking, I guess? Yeah, or, like when you, did you have to go there before you did the knocking is more formal? Yeah, knocking is more formal. So I guess they knew that we were dating. They, like, they, they knew, play, okay. They were dating. Mm -hmm. So I guess of course said, yeah, I said he wants to marry me. So my dad called. Her dad and said, "Okay, this what y'all wants to do." Um, so I think the process started okay, initially. So, so was asking me, but I just came to uh, But no, it started with me telling my parents. Like, you started. Right? You, know, uh, <laughs> you buy me ice cream. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the process started initially with us getting to know each other, and then feeling like, okay, we're getting serious. So I met his parents. He met my parents informally, right? Um, then you, first you came to LA for Teresa's bridal shower. Yeah, yeah. And that was when I think they met you knowing that something was something going, was on. going on. Yeah. Then we we both realized that our parents were traditional, so we would go the traditional route as far as um, doing a knocking. Um, so I had an auntie, a, a friend of well, an auntie of mine in the house. Who I explained to her that you know things are kind of a bit slow between me and Portia. I want to get married to her, but it just doesn't seem like it's it's moving fast or soon enough. What do you think? And then her husband overheard our conversation and said, "Yeah, you know where we come from, yeah, or well, your culture. So sometimes parents may not say, but they may be wanting to see what way we come, not just Portia telling her that he yeah, wants to marry me. So he said, tell your dad to call." Her dad and let him know. So I said, Dad, I think this is what we need to do. My dad was like, You know what? It's actually true. If you're serious, I, I will call Porsche Dad. So my dad called Porsche Dad and said, Oh, yeah, I've suddenly seen somebody in the home, your home, you know, Porsche, yeah. a, a flower, and he really wants to marry her. We want to know when we can come home to do what is right. And then dad said, No problem, he gave us a date, and then we went to do the knocking. After we did the knocking, and they gave us the permission to make plans to come and marry her. Then I proposed to her and said, hey, will you marry me the Western way? Um, because that's where we, we, we also come in, you know, they also want to get their ring, you know, celebrate them in front of their friends. And we did a surprise something. Now mine is, <clears throat> I think the reason why we have to put a bit more effort as men, Ghanaian or African men, to surprise our females, because they already know we're about to get married, right? How can we make the occasion more beautiful? So I, I think it's more like one, you know, yes, you're a believer of Jesus Christ, right? You believe he's your Lord and personal savior. But the baptism is is your way of showing other people that you have made this walk with the Lord official. So I saw that as like, okay, she knows who wants to get married, but we haven't told a lot of people. Let me gather her friends and honor her in front of her friends and ask her in front of them and say like, please, I want to marry me, marry you, will you marry me? And we did it in a very surprising way so she wouldn't see it coming. We did a, a photo shoot for our engagement photos and then I just said, I want to do this in front of your friends. 
and I want to honor you in front of your friends after your graduation and say, will you marry me in front of them? That's what. That's how we did it. That's that's nice. I like I like that part of me. <laughs> I like that part very much. What would you say to someone on the eve of their wedding? I'll tell you straight up. If you know this is not the one and you're doing this because you need to please a family member, the church, um, your own trophy, wife for life, run away. You still have time. Mm -hmm. Run. I always tell people, let people laugh at you for four months on social media or around for four months instead of you going through so much for years and nobody will be there to bail you out. I'd rather be a laughing stock in public for four months than to be a private failure in front of people. I mean, just in front of myself mm -hmm. um, for years to come. So if you know this is really not the one you love and you know that God's called you to this person or you see this person helping you in the future, run. It's better to be laughed at for four months than to cry for years and years and years. Now, if you know this is the one that you are to be with, please take a vow seriously and love the person with all your heart. And life will only be good to you if you're good to what life brings to you. And I think um, steward your wife, steward your life, do these things well, and you'll have a prosperous life. Those are the things I'll tell somebody the evil did. Yeah. I think on a lighter note, if you do notice the person and you're continuing down the process, for the ladies, oftentimes we get very bogged down in the details and we don't enjoy the day. And it goes by super, super fast. So most of my, my friends that have gotten married after me, I think my last thing that I send them a couple days from their wedding is don't stress the details on the day. Just enjoy it. Be in the moment. Because although it's one day, it's an important day and you don't do it again. So try to enjoy it to the fullest what I would say. Like like y'all did. Y'all danced that day like I've never seen him dance before. He danced. Uh... <laughs> that is so nice. When you find the one, why would you dance? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's go on to the last question and that is the question of the day. What is your, what is your take on sex before marriage? How difficult was it for you and how were you able to prevent that? I don't think the our issue was sex before marriage. I think our issue issue was pur purity before marriage. Purity just before the Lord, right? I think that was one of the hardest things. Um, being able to to cleanse your mind, uh, to really cleanse your mouth, things that you say, um, situations. We always just knew that we're not having sex. It's not. It wasn't. That wasn't the hardest part. Like we weren't going to get to the point of okay, let's have intercourse. I think it was difficult fighting the temptations of, okay, we may not have sex, but let's try this, let's talk this way, let's, or, in, or maybe you do FaceTime and things may be a certain way. I think those were where the battles of holiness and purity became difficult. Mm -hmm. So we had to step back and realize why, first of all, why, why are we so sure that we don't want to have sex before marriage? I think once we understand that, We'll be able to tackle everything else, right? Um, sometimes I believe our generation is so caught up in no sex before marriage. We look at the uh, the issues that can happen if one is caught and how one looks like if they are caught, and then we make that the premise of our 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 striving to be good. But what happens is that you can maybe conquer and not have sex, but can you conquer the thoughts? Jesus Christ said that. Um, you know, if a man looks at a woman and they thinks that they have really committed, so how then do we get the totality of holiness? So I think that's where we have to come to understand that our holiness, our purity is unto God. So like Michael says, holiness unto the Lord. It's not abstinence unto self, because people become abstinent because of themselves. Then maybe nobody married them for 10 years, and they say, I have all this abstinence, and then I'm still not married, I might as well just what? Uh -huh. But when it's unto God, then it's no matter what comes or goes, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't give up. So what we start doing, you know, putting parameters. Okay, let's not be fake. If you face let's not do that this time. If you don't, make sure you don't wear this, don't wear that. And those are the things that helped our total, uh, our relationship when it came to just purity, not so much sex. We believe that um, there's wisdom behind why God doesn't want us to have sex even before marriage. Let's take out of wisdom one. It's like you can easily compare yourself so you compare your partner to somebody you had in the past. You may never be happy with that. 
um, you can get pregnant. There's nothing wrong with a baby being born. I think the issue becomes timing, right? When it comes to the wrong time, it derails a lot of things you may have wanted, wanted to do. Um, uh, STDs, this is so many different things you can just come into. But if you have that one person, you know the person is good. It's the one the Lord has for so you. You don't have to not worry about different, different things. Now, can the Lord cleanse? Can the Lord change our lives? Yes. But sometimes it's difficult just to be like, see, tell me, but Veronica used to do this. And so, so used to do that. So, must know, it be Veronica? I don't know. I, I don't really need to keep What is that now? What? You know? So, it's just those are the things that we must battle. And those things take prayer and fasting. But why go to all that hassle when you can just do it God's way? have it a bit easier you know and i think my wife she was a virgin you know so um for me i know selling pets or pet that's what she knows i'm happy selling, well, you have one already yeah, you so have one she, has to, she has no reason but to lie <laughs> yeah. but me but, but me right I, I, that, I, but I, and there's some things i told you i dealt with before i want to make sure like i'm not tied to any other thing because i know myself and i went into the, to the lord in honesty that already this is a struggle this is why I don't want to bring it to my marriage. The Lord has really, really, really worked on me and helped me. That hasn't been an issue. But why go through these fasting periods when you can just really move into a smooth? Like the prayer of us, I was doing for already. Ah, it's because of my own wala. Uh -huh. My wife, I don't think she was sitting there having to pray some prayer already. I don't go into nah because she had lived a certain way. So if anybody should take it from anybody, take it from me. That is best to wait on the Lord. You know what how man, you don't have to worry nobody talking about you and and it's just it's just better. That's my two cents for it. I think you said it all. Yeah. Man, I wish you said that louder. I know you said it all though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. part though, like it's just for your own good. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, people don't get it because they, they enjoy the moment and the satisfaction it brings or security that some girls may feel, some guys may feel what they're doing now. Mm -hmm. But it will haunt you, especially if you feel like your wife doesn't lead up to what you... That's what pornography and these things do too. You come into a marriage thinking this is what sex should look like, what it should be. If it doesn't match to what you were doing or what you saw, then it becomes an issue. And a lot of people have issues in the marriage because of that. 